This flag is the symbol of liberty for over 160 million Americans. And this is the symbol of justice, which those self-same Americans enjoy. Good evening, I'm Charles Bigford. The rights of liberty and justice travel all over the world with anyone who enjoys the privilege of carrying this priceless piece of paper. All the hard-fought freedoms, from the Pilgrim's Landing to the Declaration of Independence to the Atlantic Charter, belong to anyone who is the legal bearer of this passport of the United States. These past events, then, measure its present worth and the lengths to which people will go to secure it. Which brings us to our story for tonight. A story which begins in Calexico, California, and which was only one incident in the career of Frank Ellis, retired member of the United States Department of Immigration. Tonight's man behind the badge. His days get hot in Calexico, California, and the office of Frank Ellis wasn't air conditioned. He figured to quit early when his boss, Tom Gallup, entered the office. Frank, I'm taking you off the Mojave case. Oh? Well, what's up? Well, I've got a top priority from Washington that there's a phony passport ring working out of Mexico. Tijuana? According to the little information they have, the headquarters is in Acapulco. Got any leads? No, all they know is that somebody is supplying aliens with passports, complete in every detail. Paper, ink, stamps. But that isn't all. What do you mean? They picked up three people in the last four months with passports, driver's license, social security cards, and credit cards. If they can supply all that, they must have a very efficient organization. They have. You're to leave for Mexico in four days. You're to go undercover. Here's your new identity. Well, it won't be the first time. <laughs> well, uh, do I go this alone? No, Tony Peters will go along as a combined chauffeur, confidant, and bodyguard. He's been briefed and knows his cover story. Tony's a good boy. Well, you better get your desk cleaned off and get started on your homework. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, uh, Chief, uh, I'm surprised one of these people they picked up didn't talk. They won't talk. That's another thing you've got to find out. Why? They had one right to the verge, a German national, 55 years of age. He asked to be left alone a minute to make up his mind. Did he? I guess he did. He jumped out the window. <laughs> Going undercover was no new experience for Frank Ellis. The next day, he memorized the material, and that night began the job of assuming another identity. Birthplace? Uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Name? Paul Robert Brennan. Age? Born September 9th, 1910. Were you ever arrested? Uh, bookmaking in 1938, sentence suspended. Uh, served a year in Atlanta, Oh, well, uh, so two years in Atlanta for bribery, 1939-1940. Where do you live? Cotton Hotel, San Diego. You married? No. Do you have a home? No. Is there such a man as Paul Robert Bremen? No, but there will be before Frank Ellis leaves this room. All one night and the next day he was questioned. The ritual would continue through meals and drinks and what little sleep he could get. Mm -hmm. Oh. What business are you in? Investments. What kind? Anything that interests me. Where do you live? Hotel in San Diego. You married? No. Have a home? No. Any living relatives? Brother in Boston. Age? 44. War experience? None. Name? Paul Robert Bremen. Paul Robert Bremen. Paul Robert. Would you ask Mr. Gallup to come in, please? Good. You two leave tomorrow. 
tomorrow night. And Chief. Yes? Get us to sleep, huh? <laughs> The following afternoon, Frank Ellis, employee of the Department of Immigration, reborn as Paul Robert Bremen, arrived in Acapulco with his chauffeur bodyguard. For three and a half weeks, he played the rich American. He made sure that everyone knew he paid for what he got, but that he couldn't be taken. He was seen where the big money lives and known where the easy money talks. Less than four weeks, Paul Robert Bremen was a part of Acapulco. I think you've made a mistake, friend. You are Mr. Bremen, are you not? That's right. Allow me to introduce myself. Leon Sandimas. I think we have something in common. A business proposition. I have certain contacts at the track of Mexico City. We have possession of certain information. Do I make myself clear? I have two rules, Mr. Sandimas. One of them is never to discuss business at dinner. And the other? The other is never discuss business with you. Ellis was building a reputation of a man who enjoyed operating on the gray side of the law, but not for pennies. And while he spread this reputation among the cover charge clientele, his assistant worked the other side of town. Between the two of them, they hoped to attract their quarry. A man in his business must make a lot of money. He does. What is his business? You didn't answer my question. You didn't expect me to, did you? No. But you like an answer. See? Well, let's just say my boss is in the business of doing favors for people. Is there money in these? Lots of money. For instance, he has a couple of friends who like to visit the States. For certain reasons, it isn't easy for them to visit the States. But my boss, well, he'll find a friend who'll do his friends a favor. You understand? Uh, these friend, your boss has not found him yet? Uh, those things take time. I have a boss, too. And sometimes my boss, he gives me a little extra. If I do him a favor. You understand? I make a little that way, too. Carlos, two more tequila. It's my turn to pay. Yeah. I'll see you get your money's worth. If we don't come up with something, I'm going to have to tell the chief to call it off. Try some other tech. I've kept a close check on the aliens in the hotel. They're a pretty closed mouth bunch. Mm. Didn't you sign the check? Gave it to the waiter. Must have forgotten it. Well, it's an engraved invitation. Oh. Well, they're great for throwing parties in this town. You are cordially invited to attend. What's it all about? To attend a special party tomorrow night at 11 p.m. The address is 611 Ocean Drive. I don't remember any homes out that way. Maybe it's going to be a pretty exclusive party. At 10.30 the next night, Frank Ellis and his assistant started out. They drove along the ocean front. Number 611 was the only building for a mile and a half. It was an empty warehouse. It was an odd place for even the most exclusive of parties. This is going to be more exclusive than I figured. It's a swell place for a hold-up. Yeah. Come on. It's me, Pedro. You came awful close to getting yourself killed, friend. I was protecting him. Didn't I see you a few weeks ago in a restaurant? That is right. You haven't got anything I want to buy. 
Come on, Tony. I think I have. I heard talk about you, Mr. Brayman. I thought first you were merely a gambler. But at the restaurant, you taught me different. All right. You got an education. What do I get? It took me a while to get acquainted with you. Questions had to be asked, answers received. I had to find out all about you. I was pleased what I found out, and so now I think you can get what you want. Which is? American passports. All right, keep talking. They come high. That doesn't mean anything. Five thousand apiece. What do I get for the money? An American passport. That isn't enough. How about the whole setup? That too can be arranged. Cost a little more. A legitimate American social security number, driver's license, even credit cards. What's the tab on two complete sets? 15,000. American dollars, of course. How do I know you can deliver? Our business is full of little gambles. I like to know the odds, especially at these prices. The choice is yours. All right. I'll try. These are the pictures for the passports. How soon can I get delivery? Ten days. Why so long? My partner, a countryman of yours, must arrange certain details. Okay. A week from Tuesday night. Eight o'clock. Room 505 Carton Hotel in San Diego. On the American side? I assume you have a legitimate passport. Naturally. You did want cash? Naturally. <laughs> you didn't expect me to bring it here, did you? It was a long 10-day wait. Ellis had gotten word to his office in Calexico that the meet was arranged. His orders were to accept the passports and pay off in marked bills. He expected to have everything tied up by 8.05. It was now 9.20. How long do we wait? Another 40 minutes. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, Mexicans lead a more relaxed life than we do, Tony. Time just isn't important. Or else we made a mistake. No. I rechecked everything. We didn't make a mistake. We played everything perfect. Well, something must have gone wrong. Look at the time. I don't have to look. Oh. <laughs> it's like I say. Time just isn't important to them. your boss. I don't deal with anyone but the head man. I'm sorry, senor. Now look, I'm not going to wait here forever. You don't have to, senor. The deal is off. On the surface, it seemed as though Frank Ellis had reached the end of his assignment. By a predetermined signal, a meeting was arranged with his superior. Since he was still on the case, and was still playing a part, he had to act in character. So far as he could determine, he was not being followed, but no chances could be taken. So far as he could determine, a mistake had been made somewhere along the line, but it was still too soon to identify himself as a member of the immigration department. Still too soon to admit defeat. I don't know. I'm sure you met the right man. Positive. Got a partner. An American. I've never met him. Think you can reopen the case? Maybe. Well, you're getting worried. The operation's spreading. Got one more hand to play. Don't know whether 
sure they'll call. And you're still on the case, but remember, it's a big money operation. If anybody gets in their way... I just deliver the message. All I know is my boss ain't happy. My boss said to go to San Diego and say no to the American deal. For no reason? No, he don't give me no reason. Uh, forget it. My boss is working on a new angle, got a new contact. Might cost him a few more bucks, but this guy will deliver. Excuse me, I have to call my... Girl. Is this enough? See, si. I talk fast. I'll bet you will. Well, it's been 18 hours, Tony. No messages. When he went to make that call last night, I figured we were home. He surely understood you. Look, Frank, this guy isn't as dumb as he plays. I started to draw a picture. He got it fast. Hmm. Well, if nothing happens, we're pulling out of here tomorrow. I'll have the chief make a deal with the Mexican police. Set up a surveillance, Jeff. Don't put any stock in it, but it's about all. Mr. Bremen's room. Just a moment, sir. I'll ask him. It's Mr. Saint Dumas. Wants to know if you can have dinner with him. Tell him yes, but downstairs. Can you meet him downstairs, sir? An hour. That'll be fine with Mr. Bremen, sir. Downstairs in one hour. Do we do business or don't we? There are certain problems. I can't buy that. I was waiting and I had the money. Certain complications. Now look, I'm working on another deal. Either you want my business or you don't. The entire decision isn't up to me. You've had plenty of time. Will you stop hedging? What went wrong? Your partner disagree on the price? We would like another week to think it over. No deal. A few hours. Where do we meet? The warehouse. I'll be there. Ten o'clock. Make sure your partner's there. There must be a cleaner place to do business, but not a more secluded one. My name is Winston. Are you the reason for the delay? I am. Why? Mr. Bremen, I take a personal interest in the work I do. And I take an interest in the people who use my efforts. If they have something in their background they keep hidden, I want to know about it. Keep talking. My partner here is in possession of the photographs you gave us to use on the passports. You changed the subject, Winston. If they have a past to hide, my future is secure. A nice little sideline. Little blackmail, huh? Get something good and solid on them and bleed them. Let's call it a mutual security pact. A little insight into their background will keep them from informing on me. Those are the conditions, Mr. Bremen. I protect my clients. They pay me well to keep their identities hidden. They can afford the luxury. In that case, maybe we can still do business. The original deal was 15, double it. No. 25. American dollars, right? In bills of hundreds and less. All right. Pay off is in San Diego. Your partner has my address. I'll expect delivery in five days. Wouldn't it be just as simple to deliver the money here? Just as simple. But not as safe. You see, I like to see what I'm buying before I hand over the money. And I would prefer 30000 and delivered here. We're playing games again, Winston. 
Now, here's my offer. 25000 Delivered to my hotel in San Diego Friday night at 8. I'll be there. But I won't wait a minute longer. Come on, Tony. show. It's $25,000 in these bundles. Man will take an awful lot of chances with that kind of money. Or to silence us. Oh, uh, take off that coat and roll up your sleeves. I want him to see that you're not hiding anything. You know, Tony, this, this Sandy Moss, he poses as such a calm, composed man. Do you ever watch his hands? That, that trick he has running his thumb along the tips of his fingers to dry them. Uh, he's too nervous for my taste. Well, Winston seems to know what he's doing. Yeah. That's what I'm afraid of. Exactly eight. Yes? Amen. Keep that door between you when you open it. I have the merchandise you ordered, Mr. Bremen. All right, let's have it. Relax, Leon. Relax. My, uh, my partner gets nervous when somebody is standing behind him. Come here, Tony. They did a good job. Nice, clean work. The best. And now, if you're satisfied, uh, the money. Leon. Try another package. And the third, please. Are you going to count it? That's not necessary. It's a pleasure to do business with you, Mr. Bremen. We'll get in touch with you if we need anything else along the same line. You do that. Come along, Leon. Oh, uh, Mr. Bremen, I'm sure your clients will find our work satisfactory. If they have any friends, we'll be glad to service them at the same fee. <laughs> Immigration officers. I'm sure they'll find the work very satisfactory. All right, boys. Through the cooperation of the Mexican police, extradition papers were speedily handled, and Leon Sandy Mas was brought to trial. His partner, being an American citizen and already under the jurisdiction of the court, was also brought to trial. They were both convicted on all counts and sentenced to not less than 30 years to the penitentiary at McNeil's Island. The United States passport is more than just a permit to enter or leave the shores of continental United States. It's like the flag, an insurance policy that affords you the protection of the Bill of Rights. Remember, if you will, how much a passport to our country means to others. Then maybe our country will mean a little more to you. And now this is Charles Bigfoot inviting you to be with us next week. Well, once again, you will see another authentic story of one whose duty it is to serve. A public servant dedicated to you. And whom you will meet as the man behind the badge.